What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we're taking a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks Edition. Now I'm excited about this vehicle because it is the highest trim level available with the smaller 1.5 liter engine. I'm excited to share it with you today. Now this is a video that's very in-depth, going over every little thing that you might need to know about the vehicle. If you're after more of the Coles Notes version, check down in the description below for that shortened version of this review video. Before we dive right into it, I want to thank you guys as always for helping to support the channel. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing because I've got some pretty cool giveaways coming up. And please consider sharing it with your social networks. But guys, let's dive right into it and figure out what the 2021 Bronco Sport Outer Banks has to offer. When it comes down to power in the Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks. Now, the Bronco Sport does technically have two different engine choices that are available. However, in the Outer Banks and below, there's only one engine choice available, and that's going to be the 1.5 liter turbo engine that we're looking at here. From a power perspective, this thing's got the ability to push out 181 horsepower and 190 pound foot of torque. So really, really nice look. Now, as you can see there, we've got easy access to the battery, which is great if we ever need a boost or if we need to give someone a boost. We've got the ability to easily check some fluids. We've got our windshield washer fluid there and then easy access in order to be able to check and change our oil. So really, really nice. I love the look of this thing though, though this is the white version of the vehicle. So obviously the just Oxford white, which is a flat paint color, but it does look really, really sharp. Now, a few things that are gonna be standard inside of the Outer Banks version of the vehicle. We do have that reverse sensing system, which is available as a default in the Outer Banks. We also do have the backup camera. So really, really nice there. Other standard technology inside of this thing, we do have the blind spot system. Let's us know if anybody's entered the blind spot in either side of the vehicle. And then there also is that lane keeping system. So lane keeping, lane centering, which helps you keep in your lane. Taking a quick peek at the key fob. So on the very top, we've got our unlock button, our lock button, remote start, our trunk release, as well as our horn or a panic alarm button. Now the vehicle also is equipped with an emergency access key. So for whatever reason our fob isn't working, we've got the ability to easily get into or out of the vehicle. Click it down into place. In order to be able to remote start the vehicle, we can remote start through our cell phone using Ford Pass Connect. Other option is to just hit this lock button once and the circle button twice. As you can see, the vehicle is now remote started. In order to cancel the remote start, all we're going to do is push that circle button once. Remote start's been canceled. From a towing perspective, as you can see there, we do have a class two hitch in the bottom. With the engine and this configuration in the outer banks, it's going to be able to tow up to 2000 pounds. And when it comes down to gas, so in this thing, as you can see there, very straightforward to get into it. It's a capless system. Just insert the fuel hose and you're good to go. And a little Easter egg along the top. As you can see, we've got different Broncos there, which is really, really cool. And as always, we do not have the OJ edition of the Bronco. As we start to look overhead, as you can see there, we've got a nice, beautiful top on this thing with nice, sturdy bars. Now, one of the nice things about these things is that it does have quite a heavy weight rating, which is really useful because there are some really cool accessories in this thing, such as a tent, and then there's even an awning capability as well. Now, in order to be able to unlock the trunk, there's a couple different ways that we can do it. There's a button inside the vehicle. Just off of the key fob, we can double press this button in order to unlock, but there is also a release on the back of the door as well, so on the actual lift gate. Now, there's actually two of them. I'm gonna show you the door one first. So if we go into the C in Bronco, you can see there's a little button there. So we're just gonna press that, and that's gonna allow us to open up that lift gate. Now, it is a manual lift gate. That's the same way across all of the trim levels in the Bronco. Can't get this thing in power yet. And then just back down from there. Now, one of the nice things about the Bronco, if you remember that older body styling of the Escape, that boxy style Escape, which is kind of where we have that look of the Bronco. But one of the nice things about the Bronco Sport is that on the other side of it, there's a release specifically for the glass. So you can get in and get access to the glass itself without having to pop up that entire lift gate. So I love the fact that Ford's brought this thing back for the Bronco Sport. Now let's have a peek at the cargo dimensions. So taking a look there, this is strictly the cargo area by itself. So as you can see, it's about the size of the Escape. So we have a nice width, nice depth to the vehicle itself. Okay, now comparatively, have a look and see the cargo dimensions when we have that second row flat down as well. So you do have the ability to get quite a little bit of stuff in the back of this vehicle. They're really, really nice if you're looking for something with that off-road capability, while still giving you some great options for cargo carrying. 
when it comes down to technology and other options available in the back of the vehicle. So a couple things to point out. Now this is the cargo cover for the vehicle. As we lift it up and over, as you can see, we've got our full size spare tire. Really, really beneficial, especially if you're taking the vehicle off road, because if you pop the tire, you'd easily be able to change one out. A little bit of storage space along both sides there. You can snap that cover back down into place easily. And along the right hand side, so as you can see there, we've got some clips for accessories, two on each side, driver and passenger. On the passenger side, we've also got our 12 volt adapter. And we've also got a light in the back. Now, if you can take a look there, you might just be able to make it out. We do have a little Bronco, which is really, really nice. Great Easter egg there. Along the other side, we do have a button there for a light, but if we push it, there's no cabin lighting in the back. This one actually controls something that's a little bit unique. So if we take a look at the back there on the actual lift gate, both sides, as you can see, we've got this light that's pivotable. So looking there, we've got it on both sides. So when we push that button, watch what happens. So we're gonna push the button and Bam, we've got light, we've got power. So it's super useful pushing that button if you're gonna be loading cargo up later on at night. Now, one thing I love about the Bronco Sport, look at these seats. So this is the brown seat in it. I love, love the look of this thing. Now, when it comes down to folding the back seats, it's very straightforward. Just along the top there, as you can see, we've got a little button. So we'd press that first in order to fold down the headrest. And then there's another little button there. We're just gonna pull that in order to fold the seat down. So very, very straightforward, and it is a 60-40 split. 60% on the driver, 40% on the passenger, so we can fold them down independently if we need to open up a little bit more space for that back. Lifting this up, and then other thing to point out along the back, as you can see there, we do have the ability to pull this tab down, and we've got a few cup holders. Lifting that back up into place, other thing to point out along the back, as you can see, we've got our basic vent controls, and we've got, just along the very bottom, there's also our built-in inverter, so we can plug in our traditional wall outlet into the back of this thing. One other thing to point out, both along the driver and passenger along the back, we do have zippered pockets in order to store some extra, so I love that little touch there. Now, when it comes down to second row spacing inside of the Bronco Sport, the outer bank, I do have a ton of room. I've got the seats both set up for people that are six feet tall. And as you can see there, I still have quite a little bit of room for my knees. I've got some decent space for my feet, which is nice. And then up overhead, most important part, I've got about three inches of head clearance space. So if you've got somebody that's 6'2", maybe 6'3", they can comfortably fit back here. Now this specific one does have the Outer Banks package, which includes the sunroof. So even with the little sunroof there, I still do have more than enough space for my head in the back seat, which is really, really nice. Now, when it comes down to the driver's door, a couple things to point out. We've got our unlock and our lock button. As we start to move down, we've got the ability to kill off power to those rear windows. We've got the ability to adjust our side view mirrors and then the window control buttons. Now, at the end of the day, especially looking at the trim in this specific color, I love the way that it works. It just flows really, really nicely. And it just has a beautiful look to it inside and out. Just to the left of the steering wheel, as you can see there, we have a series of different buttons. Now, the first one to point out, really, really neat. It's actually boxy, very much so like the Bronco. But as you can see there, we do have the liftgate release. We've also got the ability to turn the fog lamps on or off by pushing this button. And then this is an actual switch for our running lamp. So for our daytime, nighttime running lamps, very top is gonna turn them off. And then we also have the auto setting. So this is gonna have them on all the time. I do recommend keeping it on the auto setting. And the reason why is it's because it's automatically going to flip you between the daytime or the nighttime running lamps, just depending on how bright it is outside. Other thing to point out, we do have our plus and our minus buttons, and these are going to be to make the screen for the middle there brighter or darker. Adjusting the driver's seat in the Bronco Sport is a very straightforward process. If we look along our left-hand side, so left-hand side for the driver, right-hand side for the passenger seat, we have a series of levers. Very first lever is going to let us bring the seat forwards and backwards. We can go up or we can drop the entire seat down. The middle lever is going to be for the backrest. So that's the one that's going to let us pull our seat forwards and backwards as necessary. Very last one is going to be for some lumbar support. So power lumbar, which is really, really nice, gives us a little bit more stability for our lower back. Adjusting the steering wheel in the Bronco Sport Outer Banks is also a very straightforward process. So if we look by our left knee, there's a little lever there. So all we have to do is crank that lever down and it's a telescopic steering wheel. So we can lift it in and out. We can go up and down with it. Once you have that perfect position, all you're gonna do is just take that lever, click it back up and lock it into place. 
All right, now this is the screen we're gonna be met with when the vehicle's first turned on. Now this vehicle does have the Copilot 360 Plus package, which the big thing that's going to give us is going to be factory navigation as well as adaptive cruise control. So this is the way that the screen's gonna look like with that package. It's gonna look slightly tweaked if you don't have the factory navigation going. Now, a couple things to point out. We do have a hotkey in order to, we can literally just press this in order to get, our, get into our factory navigation. We can turn the audio on or off either there or by pressing this button. So that bang on the luffs and sound system, really, really nice. We've got the ability to easily add a phone there as well. So we'll get to that one in just a second, but let's start off with some basic audio settings. So basic audio, we've got the ability to change sources between AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth stereo. So if we had a Bluetooth MP3 player, our cell phone, things like that connected, it would show up there. Moving back, we can direct tune a few different ways. So we can either type in a radio station if we want to change it and enter. As you can see, we've changed stations and we can tune that way. There's a tuning knob there, or we also have the option to use our voice by pressing a button on the steering wheel. Now, a couple other things to point out. If you ever want to save a station that you've tuned to, all we have to do is press and hold and that will save. Now that's going to be the same. So we, as you can see there, we've got a mix of AM, FM, Series XM. So you can do a little bit of a mix and match there. Now, as we start to move down, adding a phone to the vehicle, a very, very, very straightforward process. Step number one, all we're going to do is press add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so very straightforward there. Now on your cell phone, all you're going to do is make sure that Bluetooth is turned on. And from there, watch what happens in a few seconds there. And as you can see, sync has shown up. So we're just going to press that and watch what Confirm happens. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, there we go. So we just want to make sure that the numbers match up, which in this case they do. So on the phone, I'm going to hit pair. And then on the screen, I'm going to hit yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Hey, there we go. Now, a couple things back on the screen for a sec there, my phone, it's asking me if I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync. I absolutely want to make sure that I do that. I'm connecting my phone so that I can make phone calls and things like that. So you're just going to hit allow on your phone there. Now, a couple things come up on the screen. 911 Assist, I always recommend turning that one on. And the big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident with your phone connected, it will automatically dial 911 for you. So definitely recommend keeping that one enabled. From there, we've also got the ability to automatically download our contacts when the phone's connected. We absolutely wanna make sure that we do that. And just hit finish. And there we go, that's it. As you can see there, we can look at my recent calls, contacts, go to my phone. If you have multiple phones connected, you've got the ability to easily change. We can go do not disturb, etc. Now, a couple of things to point out. If we jump back to audio for a second, we've now got my phone or we can run off of any installed radio app. So I've got LiveX Live. If you had Spotify, things like that, you'd be able to use that as an entertainment source. Under app, same thing. We've got that radio app that's shown up. And in order to be able to easily remove a phone, very straightforward. So as we saw there, so we went to settings, phone, and now we can either view devices, we can look at my text messaging options there, roaming warnings, etc. But if I go view devices, we've got all of the available connected devices. By clicking on it, we can either disconnect or we can fully remove, remove the phone. And as you can see, it's now disconnected. Jumping back in a phone, we have now disconnected. So it's really that simple. Using navigation inside of the Bronco Sport is also a very straightforward process. So all we're gonna do is hit the nav button there, and then as you can see, we've got this nice, beautiful display. In order to be able to navigate to an address, we're just gonna start typing. Now it will auto-complete as well, so we can just start typing, and then it'll automatically complete the address for us. So you can see it's got the address there, so we're just going to click. We can either save it as a favorite or just start the navigation route. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. Okay, so we've set our route up. Now we can do a couple things. We can either cancel the voice guidance. We can cancel the route completely. Very straightforward there. And by going to the menu button. So let's go there for a second. We can change out our screen view, look at traffic list, navigation settings. So map preferences, we've got the ability to look at 3D city modeling, breadcrumbs. If we had breadcrumbs enabled, and if we're taking a route, what would happen on the nav screen is we'd see a series of little dots based off of a route that we've taken. So really useful if you're going off-roading and you're not 100% sure where you're going. From there, we've got our point of interest icons. That's going to give you the ability to see what gas stations and coffee shops are nearby. 
Moving into our route preferences, we can choose between either the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route, and we've got a series of other preferences as well. Now one thing to point out is whatever preferences you have there, it'll dynamically update the navigation for you. So if you don't like to go on freeways, toll roads, etc., select those preferences and it'll build you a route based off of what you do and don't like. Last one is going to be our navigation preferences. So we've got different prompts. We've got our voice and tones, our voice or just the tone. And that's when you've got an upcoming turn. So voice and tone would say turning in 200 meters with a beep. You can have it just so that it's telling you to turn or it's just a tone letting you know that you're going to be coming up to an upcoming turn basics of the navigation. We've got the ability to look at where am I, search, our history, so addresses we've already gone to, our favorites, our point of interest, and then the other two big ones are our home or our work address. One of the big benefits of setting up your home and work address is that we can press the hotkey on the steering wheel for our voice and we can just say navigate home and it'll automatically set up our route to either our home or our work address. So really, really useful feature there. And that's going to be the basics of the factory navigation. When it comes down to the app screen, we've got the ability to add a device. We can find mobile apps, and there are some Series XM travel apps that will work directly through this middle screen as well. Moving into our basic settings. So this is where we get into a lot of the added settings of the vehicle. Firstly, let's start off with our sound settings. So our treble, mid-range, bass, and balance, number of options there. We can just go back. From there, we've got our clock settings. So we can get to our clock settings two different ways. We can go settings to the clock, or we can just press the clock time at the top. And as you can see there, we can now change between hours. So up and down an hour, up and down a minute. We can change between AM or PM or switch between the 12 hours. So the military time or our traditional 12 hour time instead. Automatic daylight, daylight savings time, that's automatically going to either spring us forward or fall us back an hour, depending on the time of year. And then our auto time zone update. When we're driving to the East Coast, the West Coast, whatever the case may be, we get into different time zones. So with this enabled, it's automatically going to adjust our time based off of the GPS location of the vehicle. As we get into, let's look at our Bluetooth settings. So we can now either turn Bluetooth off or we can add a Bluetooth enabled device. Moving back, we've now got Search our phone. For your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. That's where we would go in order to add a device. We can also just go to the phone setting along the bottom. Now this button here, the radio button is actually dynamic based off of whether you're on Sirius XM or your regular radio. So looking there, we've got our radio text and then our preset pages. Now preset pages, so right now as a default, you're only going to have two. I always recommend maxing it out, going to six preset pages, and I'll show you why in just a sec. It'll update in three, two, one, perfect audio as you can see there we've now got six different pages of presets so we can have up to 30 individually saved stations there now watch what happens when i change it up to sirius xm instead and then go back to my settings so it's went gone from radio to sirius xm now when we click on that as you can see we have a number of different options preset pages it's going to be the same for sirius xm or am fm so we'll always leave that at six we've got the ability to seek different categories parental locks tune start we've got so many different options there so if you're a heavy sirius xm user knowing that you've got the capability to change out some settings all you have to do is make sure in your audio that you are actually on sirius xm for your radio source Jumping back into settings again, we've got some more advanced driver assistance settings. This is where we have a ton of different options. Firstly, different options for cruise control. Now this thing does have the outer banks, or sorry, the Copilot 360 plus package, I should say, which does have the adaptive cruise control. With that package, we've got the normal adaptive and intelligent. If you didn't have the Copilot 360 plus, you just have normal cruise control. The adaptive cruise is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control. So let's say if you set it to 120 on the highway, car in front of you slows down, down, yours will automatically break. If they speed up or get out of the way, yours will pick right back up to speed again, which is really, really nice. Intelligent Cruise Control takes the adaptive to the next level. So the intelligent is based off of having a tolerance level set as well. So let's say if we set our tolerance level to five kilometers an hour, and let's say if we're on a road that's 60 kilometers an hour, We've got it set for 60 kilometers an hour and all of a sudden the speed drops to 50. What's going to happen is with the intelligent cruise control, the vehicle is automatically going to slow us down to whatever our tolerance level is over the posted speed limit. So really, really beneficial to have that system going there. From there, we've got pre-collision, oh, sorry, lane keeping system. So lane keeping system works three different ways. First way is it's going to be a little bit of a steering wheel shake. So if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, you'll get a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. The aid, if you start to go over into a lane without signaling, the steering wheel will actually take over and it'll pull you and recenter you back into your lane. 
the alert and the aid will do both. So it'll give you a little bit of a shake on the steering wheel, but it's also going to recenter you and pull you back into your lane. From there, the alert intensity is the intensity of the steering wheel shake, high, normal, or low setting. Moving back, we've got our pre-collision assist, a really, really useful feature. I love that Ford's including this in all of their vehicles now. You can turn it off if you really don't like it, but one of the benefits is if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it's going to pre-charge the brakes and actively brake for you in, either, in order to either avoid or minimize the impact of the collision. And then we also have the option for evasive steering, so if braking isn't enough, it'll actually take over the steering wheel and pull you out of the way of a potential collision. And then how sensitive is it as well? From there, we've got our speed sign recognition. So that's going to be something on the steer, just above the steering wheel cluster there. So let's us know what the posted speed is on the local road we're on. And that actually also gives you the option for a speed warning. So speed warning with a tolerance, the same thing. So if the posted speed is 50 kilometers an hour, you're going 55 kilometers an hour with a tolerance of five set. If you've got this on, you'll get a chime letting you know that you're speeding. So useful, especially if you have younger drivers. From there, we've got our rear camera, so rear view camera. Now, this one is equipped with the reverse sensing system. Now, the enhanced park aid is this that we've got along the side there. So as you can see there, whether or not that shows up, really a matter of preference, but I absolutely recommend keeping it on because when we're backing up, let me show you there. So when we're backing up there, as you can see, we do have that enhanced park aid there, and that's going to beep out at us as we start to get closer to an obstacle behind us. From there, as we start to move down a little bit more, we've got our blind spot system. So blind spot system lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Watch the side view mirror for a second there. So I'm just going to toggle that, so as you can see there, so highlighting orange there. So that lets us know if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So very, very useful feature to have. As we start to move back, we've now got the trailer sway control. Trailer sway control, what that's going to do is if the vehicle senses that your trailer is swaying, it's automatically going to apply braking to the engine in order to try to get that trailer sway under control. The parking aid is that beeping that we get as we start to get closer to an obstacle behind us. We've got the ability to easily turn that off. Cross traffic alert. If a vehicle is coming perpendicular to the left or to the right of the vehicle, it's going to give us a warning letting us know of a potential collision. You can turn that one on if you don't like it. From there, we've got our driver alert. Driver alert is going to be tied into the lane keeping system. So if we get too many alerts letting us know that we're going into a lane without signaling, it'll tell us that we should probably take a break. From there, we've got the ability to easily turn off traction control. Next up, we've got some basic vehicle settings. So we've got the ability to have a 30 minute max idle. Keep that one on because if you idle for longer than that, you don't want to be chewing through gas unnecessarily. Rear occupant alert is a really, really neat one. What happens when the vehicle is turned off? Let's, let me show you how that works. love the fact that we've got that rear occupancy alert. It's a very simple message, but it does let us know to make sure that we check to make sure that there's nobody in that back seat. So it's a super useful system, especially if you have young kids. So I love the fact that Ford's introduced this into their vehicles. My key gives you the ability to set up certain limitations for individual key fobs. So if you're lending the, your vehicle out to a child, or if you want to play a prank on your spouse, you can set certain limitations on each individual key fob. And that would be things like the vehicle can only go up to a certain speed. Maybe the radio can't turn on until the seatbelt's plugged in. So there are a lot of options there. We've got our serial number remote start setup. So the vehicle you can remote start through the fob or through the Ford Pass app. Now it's very, very straightforward. So we can either, we can completely disable remote start if we want to, but what happens when we get remote started? Is it going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Is it going to be based off of our last settings? Our seats and steering wheel, do we want to have the heated seats and the heated steering wheel come on automatically or have it off? Again, let's let the vehicle decide. And from there, the duration of the remote start, is it going to last for five, 10 or 15 minutes? As we start to move down, we've got our window setting now. So remote open or remote close. So yeah, you've got the ability to use your key fob in order to be able to open and close the windows in this Bronco Sport. Let's hop outside to see how that's done. In order to be able to use the key fob to roll the windows down, it's a very straightforward process. So all we're gonna do is press that lock button twice. On the second press, you're just gonna hold. So one, two, and hold. Amazing! Now, in order to be able to roll the windows back up, we're just going to press the lock button twice. Same thing on that second press we're going to hold.
back up again. So I love the fact that they have included this feature inside of the Bronco Sport. Love it, love the fact that we've got the capabilities to do that directly through our fob. Jumping back, we've also got some ambient light. So ambient light is going to be the brightness inside of the vehicle there. So they unfortunately don't have the ability to change colors like you do in the Badlands, but at the same time, it still kind of does look pretty cool. From there, we've got our wipers and we've got a couple different options there. Should be, yeah, courtesy wipe, rain sensing wipers. So this thing is equipped with rain sensing wipers because of the package options that it's got. Rain sensing wipers is automatically going to turn the wipers on if it senses rain hitting the windshield. Now, one of the nice things is that when the wipers are on, it's automatically going to flip on the rear wiper when you put the car into reverse, as long as this setting is active. So definitely let's keep that one on. We've also got some basic lighting, so auto high beam. The vehicle is automatically going to adjust the high beams as necessary. So if you're driving on a dark road, it'll automatically flip the high beams on for you. And as the vehicle senses an oncoming vehicle, it'll automatically dim them before turning those lights off completely. So really, really useful. From there, we've got an auto lamp delay. So when we actually turn the vehicle off, when we go to lock, do our lamps stay on for 10, 20, or 120 seconds, or do they just go off right away? Moving down, we've also got basics for our locks. So auto unlock, miss lock, switch inhibitor, etc. Now, a lot of these have to do with what happens when the fob leaves the vehicle. So if your vehicle's on and you leave, you're gonna get a notice and you're gonna get an audible beep letting you know that the vehicle's still on. From there, auto unlock, if the vehicle senses that the key fob is closed, it'll automatically unlock the doors when you go to push, open up the door there. And then other things like the miss lock chirp. So let's say if one of the doors isn't completely shut and you go to lock it, you'll get a double horn letting you know that there's something not right when you were trying to lock when we go to remote unlock the vehicle do all doors become unlocked or is it just going to be the driver's door so if you want added security definitely just go driver's door there and back from there last one is going to be our intelligent access I think that is, oh, last one, door keypad code. So the vehicle itself is equipped with a five digit factory number that we can use in order to get remote access to the vehicle if we don't have the fob. All you'd have to do is enter in that five digit number. You can set as many of these things as you'd like though, which is really, really nice. Now the actual five digit number there, let's look on the outside of the vehicle for a second, is going to be this right here. So that's going to go away just depending on, well, I mean, if you walk away from the vehicle, the vehicle's off, etc. These won't be there, but it's really useful to have, especially if you don't have your key fob on you and you need to get inside of the vehicle. Okay, and back from there. And that is the basics of the vehicle settings. Okay, next up, Ford Pass Connect. So the vehicle is equipped with an onboard modem, and if you have a if you have a plan directly through a cell phone provider for a data only plan, you can use it as a wireless hotspot for up to ten devices, which is really really neat. Now, on top of that, you can do things such as remote start the vehicle. You can roll up and down the windows, etc., directly through your cell phone. Moving back. We've also got some basic general settings. So we can change between English, Spanish, or French. So whatever language of preference, Celsius and Fahrenheit, liters per hundred or miles per gallon, different tire pressure. Now there's beeping that we're getting. That beeping, so we can turn it off if you're not a fan of the beep there. Last big one to point out is going to be the reset. So if for whatever reason the Sync 3 screen is giving you troubles, all you have to do is just do a reset on it, and that's just going to bring you back to factory defaults. If you've got an issue with your Ford Pass Connect app, you can just go Ford Pass Reset, and same thing, that'll just bring you back to factory defaults there as well. From there, we've got Wi-Fi and automatic updates, which are tied together. So I do recommend connecting to Wi-Fi at home. And the reason why is because with automatic updates enabled, it's automatically going to update the firmware for the vehicle for you. So really, really useful, really, really beneficial, making sure that you have that set up. Last one there, or next one there, I should say, is going to be our 911 assist, which we did cover off when we connected our phone. 911 assist, if the vehicle senses a collision, will automatically dial 911 for you if your cell phone's connected. So absolutely always recommend making sure that you're driving with your phone connected to the vehicle with that setting turned on. From there, we've got some basic mobile apps and the ability to have different settings there basic display settings. So as nice and beautiful as this display is, for some people it might be a little bit much. So we've got the ability to either press the button there or there's a hotkey, we'll get to that in a second. We can either turn the display completely off, press to turn it back on, or we can have it in a calming screen with just the time and the date instead. Same thing, one button press in order to bring it back to life. 
Jumping back to our display, we can change the background if we want to, change the brightness, and we can also change the mode. So right now we're looking at the daytime mode. I want you to look at the nighttime for a second because I love the look of it because of this. It's blue, it's bright, it's beautiful. I love the look of it. I would keep this in the nighttime mode all the time. But maybe you like the daytime mode when you're in auto. The vehicle is going to automatically flip you between the daytime or the nighttime mode depending on how bright it is outside. Perfect, there we go. And as we start to move over, we've got our voice control. So there are a couple things that we can do with the vehicle. We've got a basic advanced mode, which I want you to take a listen for a second. 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. Okay, so let's jump back to the audio section for a second. So it's changed the radio station for us, but with the advanced mode on, let's try that again. 94.9. Okay, we didn't get a message there, but look at this. It's changed the radio station for us. So by having the advanced mode on, we just won't get as many prompts. So I definitely recommend keeping and turning that one on. Phone confirmation, when you're making a phone call, would you like to call such and such person? Yes, make sure you do that. And then our voice command list. When we press the steering wheel button there, this is the command list. So we have a number of different things. We've got the ability to look at different commands, etc. but you can hide that command list completely just by toggling that switch off. From there, we've also got our valet mode, which with valet mode enabled, you can enter in a four digit number in order to lock out the screen. So one, two, three, four. Don't use one, two, three, four. Use something more challenging, but look what's happened. It's completely locked the screen out. So we can't actually get back into it until we enter that four digit number again and go to unlock. So really, really useful feature to have. Just make sure you remember that four digit number. Last one is going to be our navigation settings, which we already covered off when we looked at the navigation there. We're going to be taking a quick look at how to set up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks Edition. Step number one, what we're going to do is take our USB cable and all we're going to do is plug it into any of the available USB ports. Click and that is step number one complete. Starting off with Apple CarPlay, very straightforward process. We're just going to take the opposite end of that USB cable and all we're going to do is literally just insert it into our phone and watch what happens. So we've got a message up on the screen there. So it's saying that Apple CarPlay lets us use a phone and our iPhone in a way that blah, 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 blah. We're just going to hit continue there. So privacy terms and conditions on top of that. So we've got some basic terms and conditions. One thing to note, you do have to agree to this in order to be able to use CarPlay. So we do have to hit agree. Now watch what happens. Okay, unlock my phone and looking at my phone itself. So we can either enter in my combination there. I can use face ID, fingerprint ID, whatever the case may be. Phone is now unlocked. Now, one thing to point out, so as you can see there, it's now got another message on the screen asking me if I want to sync up or allow CarPlay to be used, I should say, when the vehicle is or when the phone is locked. All I'm going to do, make sure that I hit allow there and I'm now connected. So this is really it. It's literally just a plug and play solution. Now, one thing to note that on Ford vehicles that have the Sync 3 system, it is a wired connection for both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But when you get into the Sync 4 system available on some vehicles, you can do that wirelessly, which is really, really nice. But looking at the basics here, as you can see, we've got my phone, music, maps. So we've got either Apple Maps or Waze. There's my messages there. We can see what's playing. We've got a podcast, audiobooks, my LiveX Live, so radio app, as well as WhatsApp. This button down on the bottom left is going to act as a home button on our phone, brings us back to the home screen. Now, one thing to note is that through your phone settings, you've also got the capabilities to be able to easily select whatever icons are showing up on the middle screen there. If we want to hop into our maps, very straightforward process there. As you can see, we're now connected. It's really really that simple which is really really cool pressing on the screen there again we can look at destinations we've already looked at change it out to a 3d map view instead and we can also see my current location now if for whatever reason you need to get back to the sync 3 home screen all we're going to do is press this forward button in the middle as you can see it's brought us right back into the home screen instead and we've got now hotkeys so we've got the ability to press that phone button there and that's going to dial us right into my phone there which is really really nice back to the home there instead and let's jump back into the home screen same thing we've got the option now of either using our our phone or we can use the maps directly on that sync 3 screen but in order to use the maps on the sync 3 screen there's a couple things we have to do so if we press carplay that'll bring us back into the basics here but let's jump back into the actual sync 3 home screen we're going to go to settings and let's look for carplay 
So we're gonna go CarPlay. Now we can either remove my phone or we can turn CarPlay off. Oh yeah, let's actually do that. So we're gonna turn CarPlay off. As you can see there, it's defaulted me back to the factory navigation instead, and my phone is still charging. And now we can completely remove my phone. That's a new one. All right, so we're gonna remove my phone completely now. And then as you can see, my phone is actually charging and we're running off of the regular Sync 3. So really, really nice to have the ability to do that. And the option, other option is just to completely remove in order to disconnect. Setting up Android Auto is also a very straightforward process. All we're gonna do is take that USB cable and we're just going to plug it into our phone along the bottom there and watch what happens. So as you can see there, so Android Auto extends the Android platform, very similar to what we just finished seeing in the Apple CarPlay side of things. So we're just gonna need to make sure that we continue and we accept that, and some basic privacy terms and conditions. Same thing, we need to agree to that in order to actually be able to use it. Now it's also giving me some messages on my phone, so all it's saying is we need to unlock to continue. So we're just gonna unlock the phone, and along the bottom just hit unlock to continue. Now it's also saying that it wants to turn on Bluetooth and allow my car to access the display from the phone, so we wanna say yes to to that so next again okay and just a second wait wait and here we go literally plug and play solution very straightforward so as you can see it's now paired with the vehicle and just along my phone there now it's saying that it wants to allow access to my messages which yes let's make sure we do that and very similar to what we just saw on the iphone side of things so do we want to have the contacts downloaded automatically yes and let's make sure that 911 assist is also activated there this is going to act as our home button for the phone itself, but as you can see there, we've got Waze, Podcast, my phone, Calendar, Maps. So that's actually one of the really nice things. So we've got the ability to select what's happening with our maps. So we can either go Google Maps or Waze. We've got basic news, reminders, different settings, and then the weather as well. Along the bottom, we've got our notifications as well as the ability to use our Google Smart Assist. And this is just gonna be a hotkey in order to press into our map. So really, really nice there. And actually, we've got some basic settings that we can control there. So we can add in different home and work addresses, very similar to what we saw in Sync 3. We've got the ability to easily search for an address. Jump back to the home screen again. So this is going to be the way that the Android Auto screen will look. If you ever need to jump back to the main Sync 3 screen instead, all we're gonna do is just hit that forward exit and as you can see there, it's brought us back to our factory settings. So we've got the ability now to press that map in order to hotkey into our preferred map on our phone. But let's say if you want to run off of factory navigation instead, all we're going to do is in our settings panel, we're just going to select Android Auto and we're either going to completely disconnect or sorry, completely remove the phone or we're just going to turn off Android Auto. So turning off Android Auto, as you can see, it's defaulted us back to factory navigation instead. And we can completely remove my phone from the vehicle by pressing that button. And then same thing. So the phone is technically charging right now, but the phone also does support wireless charging. So if the Bronco Sport that you've chosen does does have support for wireless charging, all we're gonna do is just drop it on the wireless charging pad there and it'll charge up as we drive. So super useful feature. Okay, next up, let's take a look at some of the other buttons and some of the other features that we've got. So this is the ability to change the direction of the fan, but we also have this little knob that's going to let us completely turn on or off each individual vent. So really, really useful. As we start to look down the screen though, so we've got our volume rocker. So we've got the ability to easily adjust that. Along the other side, we've got the ability to manually tune that way. So as I pointed out earlier, we can either direct tune, we can tune using this, or we can press the button on the steering wheel in order to change the station. Moving down, we've got our auto start stop. So that's the one that's going to potentially kill power to the engine when we're stopped for an extended period of time. We can turn that one off, but it has to be done on a case by case basis. So every time you turn off the engine, you have to hit that switch again. We've got our four way blinkers. And this one is going to be for our basic audio settings. So look at this. So we've got a hotkey in order to get to our treble mid-range bass. We can press that button again to go back. We can skip between songs or radio stations, play and pause. And then we've also got some basic controls for our screen. So we can go between either the calming screen, we can go to the blackout screen or bring the screen back to life again. As we start to move down, so a couple things to point out, we do have the ability to store a phone there. And one of the nice things about the Badlands package, or so the Outer Banks package of the vehicle, is that we do have a wireless charging pad now. So we've got the ability to wireless charge, wirelessly charge a phone if our phone accepts it. So really, really useful feature to have there. Also available in the Badlands trim level. As we start to move down, as you can see, we've got our cigarette lighter adapter, as well as a, US, a few USB ports. So our USB and our USB-C. 
As we start to move down, a couple things to point out. We do have our park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then our low gear mode. And from there, we've got our cup holders, as well as our electronic parking brake. So we can easily turn that one on or off. Next one is going to be our auto hold setting. So our auto hold setting, if we have that one turned on, and if we come to a complete stop, and we take our foot off the brake, it's going to hold the car in place. So really, really neat setting. From there, we've also got our different GOAT modes. So different GOAT modes, so essentially our go over anything, so our all-terrain modes, really, really nice. We've got a few different modes there. Let's do a little bit of a switch and see what happens. So we've got our normal mode, our sand mode. To the other side, we've got our eco mode, sport mode, as well as our slippery mode, which is going to do a couple different things. So we've got things like traction control getting disabled, etc., just based off of the way that we currently have it set up. Now, actually, one thing, though, is we start to look at our climate control settings. So very, very straightforward there. Now, this does have dual zone climate control capabilities inside of this specific trim level. But as you can see there, we've got dual zone climate settings and we've got this little dual zone button now. Now, whatever happened, whenever we press this button, watch what happens. It's going to default us back to whatever the driver setting is. We can turn the system off completely. Very top, we've got our rear window defroster, max windshield defrost. We've got the ability to look between whether the fan's going to our windshield, face our feet, air circulation button. So with that button turned off, it's going to take air from outside the vehicle and it's going to bring it in. If we turn it on, it's going to circulate air throughout the cabin instead. And this is going to be our air conditioning button, max air conditioning button. Let the vehicle determine what the temperature should be. From there, we've also got our heated seats, the ability to control the fan speed, and then we've also got the heated steering wheel button. So a hot key to that, which is really, really nice. And that's going to be the basics of this middle cluster, of this middle console. One other thing to point out is going to be, we've got a little compartment there. So all we can do, lift that up and take a peek. So we've got a spot in order to store a few extra things, and there are a few extra USB ports there. So you can see we've got another USB and another USB-C. Next up, let's take a peek at the steering wheel and learn all about the steering wheel buttons as well as that cluster screen. So one thing to point out is that this vehicle does have the Copilot 360 Plus package, which is going to give us the adaptive cruise control. If we didn't have that Copilot 360 Plus, we would just have regular cruise control there. But this one does have the added 360 Plus, which gives us the adaptive. So we've got the ability to easily turn on our lane keeping system. We know that one's on whenever we see this button along the top on the screen. And we've also got our lane centering button in the bottom there. So so when we see that steering wheel in the middle, that means that the lane centering system is on as well. Now that's a system that's going to potentially recenter us back into our lane if we start to veer over without signaling. From there, the very top left button is going to be our distance indicator. So that's going to let us determine the distance that we are between us and the vehicle in front of us when we're using the adaptive cruise control. The bottom right hand button is going to be the ability to cancel out the cruise and if for whatever reason we have to press the brake we can press the resume button in the middle there and from there this also acts as a trigger switch so we can either increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time or we can use it to initially set our speed so very very straightforward now one thing to note is that with the adaptive cruise control system if you've never used it before once you do you'll never want to go back because it's a set it and forget it cruise control let's say if you set it at 120 on the highway if the vehicle in front of you slows down yours will automatically slow down can come to a complete stop before we're picking you back up to speed again it's a really really useful feature to have as we start to move down so we've got a couple things to look at we've got the ability to either increase or decrease our volume or we can completely mute by pressing this button on the, on the bottom on the right hand side ton of other options there we've got our back button the ability to scroll through screens this middle button works as a hotkey as well so we can just press and hold and then we've got a basic menu settings button so let's see how these all work in tandem with this middle screen so as you can see there we've got some basic trip settings so if we ever need to reset our trip all we're going to do is press and hold the ok button there in the middle and that's reset us again from there as we start to move down we've got a few different settings there so our tire pressure active station and we've got the ability to do a few different things there. So we can go up, down with it there to look at some different screens. If we press the menu button, we've got the ability to look at some basic settings. So things like our oil life, we can also do an oil life reset. Moving into our display setup. So we've got the ability to show our miles per hour there. So as you see, we go from kilometers to miles per hour. It would be the same down in the States if you were in miles to show kilometers per hour. And from there we can go back and we've got the ability to move between different screens there. And same thing, just by pressing the menu button, it's going to give us the option to do a couple different things and to look at a few different settings there. So very, very straightforward. It's a very simple, not obtrusive, not complex screen whatsoever, but very, very straightforward just by navigating, by pressing these buttons there. 
As we start to move down, a few other buttons to point out. We've got the ability to either change between radio stations or songs. We can hang up on a phone call. We can answer a phone call. And then this is going to be the hotkey for our voice command options. So we've got the ability to change a radio station, navigate, make phone calls, etc. All by pressing this middle button. Now, a couple other things to point out on this thing. Along the left-hand stick there, the very tip, that's going to be for our lane keeping system. So lane keeping system, we can turn that one on or off. We know that the system is actually on when we see these lanes there. Now, the system itself doesn't actually activate until we hit about 62 kilometers an hour, and that's going to highlight green when we know that it's fully active. From there, we've got the ability to flick our high beams on or off. Now, one thing to note is that when we're on the auto setting, we can't turn our high beams on all the time. The vehicle's automatically going to adjust it for us. So all we need to do is we just need to switch it from our auto into our lights on all the time setting instead. But I do recommend keeping into the auto, let the car determine when the light should be on. As we move over to the stick on the right, so this vehicle is equipped with rain sensing wipers. So this is going to determine the sensitivity to the rain on the windshield very end of it the stick there as you can see that little button is going to let us control that rear window wiper so we can turn it on all the time or have it intermittent by pulling the stick towards us that's going to be for our front windshield wiper and by pushing away that's going to be for the one in the back As we start to move up overhead, as you can see, we've got a few things. Now, this one does have the Outer Banks package, which does give us that sunroof there. So, nice little sunroof, nothing too big. But a couple things to point out. We've got our basic cabin lights. So, turn the cabin lights on, have them turn on whenever the doors are open, or have them off permanently. So, you've got some options there. We also do have, as you can see, a few options. So, the one on the right is going to be for our shade. So, single button press to open, single button press to close. And then we've got the actual sunroof itself. So, by pressing that button, so you can see there, nice, beautiful view up overhead. So really, really nice. And then same thing, all we're gonna do is just press away in order to be able to close it up. From there, we've also got our sunglasses holder. And the other thing to point out up overhead, as you can see, we do have this little guy with our mirror in the side there. And it also does have that built-in extender. So all we have to do is pull in order to give us a little bit more sun blockage from there and lock it back into place. All right, guys, that was a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Outer Banks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, make sure you drop it down in the box below and let me know. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your social network and also subscribe to the channel to continue to help it grow. But until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.